modular multiplicative inverses. What is the x inverse of mod 17? How do you compute this efficiently? First of all, what is a modular multiplicative inverse? Consider a number x. We denote its multiplicative inverse by x to the power of negative 1, such as x times x to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1. In the realm of non-modular arithmetic, the inverse is simply x raised to the power of negative 1. So you have 7 times 7 to the power of negative 1, and then this equals to 1. However, how do we do this in modular arithmetic? Modular multi multiplicative inverses. We consider the integer class z of 7. We note that if we have 8, it's congruent to 1 mod 7. Therefore, if we have 2 mod 7, then we have 4 to a modular inverse of 2 in z7. Our modular inverse is always unique. Will there always exist a modular multiplicative inverse? Some facts. A. Modular inverses are not unique. We can consider 2 times 11 is equal to 22, which is congruent to 1 mod 7. Therefore, we show there exists greater than or equal to 2 solutions. B. Modular inverses do not always exist. Consider 2 in Z4. Exhausting all factors within Z4, we can show there does not exist such a factor. Statement. A modular inverse for A exists in Z of M if and only if A is co-prime to M. The proof is beyond the scope of this video, but feel free to check out the link in the description. The first algorithm we're going to be using is actually the extended Euclidean algorithm, which I covered in an earlier tutorial for GCD. The extended Euclidean algorithm considers the following equation with unknown x and y, a times x plus m times y is equal to 1. Now we have a linear Diophantine equation and two equations for two unknowns. We know from Bayzut's lemma in the extended Euclidean algorithm that GCD of a and m is equal to 1. Moreover, we have that a times x is equal to m1 minus m times y. This also means that a times x is congruent to 1 mod m. Therefore, we need to identify x, which is the inverse of a. For implementation, we can simply use the extended Euclidean algorithm to determine the coefficients in Bayzut's lemma. So simply having this quick solution, we quickly determine what the answer is. The time complexity of this is all of log n. Second algorithm is Euler's theorem plus Fermat's Lowell theorem. Euler's theorem states that a of phi of m is congruent to 1 mod m, which holds if a and m are relatively prime, where phi is the Euler Teuton function. Fermat's Lowell theorem states that a to the power of m minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod m, which holds if m is prime. So putting it all together, if we multiply both sides of both Euler's theorem and Fermat's Lowell theorem by a to the negative 1, we get that a to the phi of m minus 1 is congruent to a to the power of negative 1 mod m, and a to the power of m minus 2 is congruent to a to the negative 1 mod m. Therefore, we can simply use our exponentiation by squaring method that I outlined in a previous video to compute the result. The time complexity of this is O of log n, where phi may take O of square root n using the factorization approach, and the space complexity is O1. The last algorithm we'll be considering is the range approach for multiplicative inverses. How do you compute a range? If we combine our previous approaches, we will yield a time complexity of O of n log n. Can we do better? To compute the modular inverse for a range of numbers in linear time, we can actually just simply use this direct formula over here. The way this works is we first denote inverse of i to be the inverse of i. We also assume that the number that we're doing modulo by m is a prime number. So the proof of this is very simple. We have m mod i, which we can easily represent as this equation over here. And then we can take mod m of both sides, as we see here. Afterwards, we can multiply everything by i inverse, which is the number we're trying to find the modular inverse for. Multiply by m mod i inverse, which will actually cancel out these two terms. And then we're simply left with our i inverse is congruent to the equation that we have on the right side, which corresponds to the indices that we have over here. So this yields to a very simple for loop and a linear implementation. So you just need to plug in this formula into your code. It's a very straightforward approach and is very efficient for computing range queries for prime number n. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe for new videos every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern.